Nice. <laughs> thanks for the introduction, Tiago, and thanks a lot for uh, Toletari for like setting up this debate and for helping uh, us a lot in the many demonstrations that we organized last year. Um, so, yeah, uh, as you said, like uh, the current situation in Brazil, uh, we, could, we can go back as, as much as we can <laughs> to explain this. But uh, yeah, I think that the military dictatorship is, is like a good point in time to start because it is uh, like it, it shows like how important uh, Lula is in Brazilian history. Um, so, yeah, just to briefly explain. Uh, why Lula is so hugely popular. Well, of course, he was elected president, but he has like a long history in uh, the working class movement. And he was like the major uh, leader uh, in, in this like huge movement uh, and promoted strikes, a uh, huge workers movement that ended up toppling the military dictatorship that pressured it out. It's like in the 60s and 70s, of course, we had like the guerrilla movement, uh, Marighella, and, uh, who famously uh, wrote, oh, I don't know how the name of the book is in English, uh, but yeah, like how to do urban guerrilla. Um, yeah, uh, so, but yeah, unfortunately that movement was like brutally crushed by the dictatorship that was supported by the CIA. And what actually overthrew the, the government was like this huge popular movement uh, organized inside the factories uh, with the unions and whatnot. And uh, the, the main difference uh, from Lula and the other union leaders back then, and this can be said to this day, like he is very politically sensitive uh, and he knows how to remain like relevant because uh, pretty much all the uh, union leaders, uh, they negotiated with the dictators and uh, the military um, but at that point in time like uh, the, the masses they like were, were tired with the like inflation uh, high cost of life uh, the situation was pretty dire uh, in brazil and uh, like lula was the 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 leader that said, okay, like, if I don't side with the people on this one, they will just, like, walk over me. So if I, uh, if I want to, like, remain where I am, I need to, like, push this forward. And then he was, like, arrested and, and all that. And famously, like, uh, elected as one of the constituents that worked on the Brazilian 89 constitution, uh, uh, 1989, uh, which is, like, the, the current political regime we sort of live in uh, and um, yeah and then like he, he was a uh, presidential candidate in 89 94 and 98 uh, was uh, defeated uh, only to be elected in 2002 so yeah this election is something that I don't think like even the workers party that well of course uh, the Workers' Party is like the larger, largest organized party in Latin America, so it's huge, of course. There are people there who understand what happened, but at least like officially, they, they don't uh, understand uh, exactly like, or, or like their, the way they present uh, the, uh, the victory in 2002 in the presidential election is uh, not, uh, uh, according to our perspective, not, not correct. So the way Lula usually describes, and he's saying that uh, in the interviews he's been giving in the past few weeks, uh, and he always said that, is that he lost the other elections because he had his base, but he didn't like sought dialogue with uh, the bourgeois and uh, middle classes and whatnot. And the difference in 2002 was that his vice president was like a... a an entrepreneur, a capitalist, a Brazilian capitalist. And the, like, according to, to their version, this is like what led to, to their victory. But the, the situation actually is, is very complicated. Like if we look at Latin America, uh, there were huge movements in Argentina and uh, there was Caracasso in uh, Venezuela, of course, and Hugo Chavez showing up. Uh, and Brazil, like if you look at the map, it's huge, uh, and 
uh, if, if, like, if the, for instance, if Brazil had a regime such as Venezuela, uh, the, whole, the entire like continent would be lost from from the imperialist point of view because it's such a, a huge country that, like, of course, it would influence a lot all, all the neighbors and whatnot. Despite we're not speaking the same language, exactly the same language, but uh, it's different from Cuba. That is like a very small country and it ends up being isolated or Venezuela that faces several difficulties despite having like large uh, oil resources. So uh, in our understanding, what happened is the situation was very dire uh, in Latin America. And we see in the early 2000s uh, that uh, imperialist forces, they, they figured out, okay, let's put this moderate uh, sort of uh, nationalist bourgeois governments and let's allow them to exist uh, in, in Latin America uh, to like hold, calm down the situation, otherwise we will like lose everything. So it, it was like one of these situations uh, like the, the damage control or, or of sorts. Uh, and like uh, this is like uh, and uh, the vice president in that case was not what enabled Lula's victory because like uh, people were on, on the streets like the, the previous government from a uh, new liberal Fernando Henrique Cardoso had frozen minimum wage for eight years uh, did several privat privatizations uh, which created major unemployment opened even more uh, the economy to imperialist companies. So yeah, the situation was getting worse and worse. So what enabled uh, Lula's victory was like uh, that situation. Like people were actively like mobilizing and protesting, uh, and yeah, of course that all channeled to to the Workers Party. Uh, and actually, the, in our understanding, what what the vice president means there is that is like a, a safety policy for for the bourgeois uh, Brazilian bourgeois, and of course, imperialism overall. It's like Lula will not go crazy. He will not expropriate anybody. Like there is this this uh, capitalist as a vice. So don't worry. And like he even also wrote a, a document. Uh, I don't know how it's mentioned in English as well, but it's like a letter to the Brazilian people in Portuguese. But <laughs> what actually it was, it was a letter to the Brazilian bankers. So I will, will not like, be sure we'll, we'll not mess around with you. So yeah, this, uh, well, this is like uh, uh, the way Lula does politics, uh, like class collaboration and all. But uh, yeah, in, in that sense, I wouldn't say like he's much of a, a social democrat, but more like uh, what he represents in, in Brazil is uh, a nationalist bourgeois government because like our bourgeoisie is so like uh, weak uh, that they, they can't develop the country like they are under imperialism but. So this, uh, it is up to the working class like to represent the actual bourgeois interests, at least in these like, backwards countries, such as Brazil. And, such, and we have, like, it's not only Lula, of course, we have uh, Chavez, which is like, uh, a bit more radical because, uh, of course, they didn't expropriate bourgeois in Venezuela, but they, they at least uh, fought with imperialism at least way more permanently. Uh, but we have like uh, uh, Kirch the Kirchners in Argentina, uh, Evo in Bolivia. So uh, in a way, they, they all like represent this interest of developing the country, uh, which is of, like, of course in the interest of the working class, but also like in the interest of uh, uh, our weak uh, national bourgeoisie. Um, but yeah, even with all, all these compromises, uh, the, the class collaboration uh, policies from the Workers' Party, from Lula, they from the start they show the, the weakness, like uh, the weaknesses. Uh, in 2005, there was the uh, Men's Salon scandal, uh, which is like a corruption scandal. Uh, where at this point we all know that corruption corruption scandals are just like. Uh, like uh, 
used for political uh, purposes. Nobody's interested in ending any corruption anywhere. So, 2005 already, they uh, they were able like to imprison several workers' party leaderships under the workers' party government, which is like crazy if you think about it. Uh, so the, uh, our, our bourgeois, uh, like our ruling class, never stopped attacking the workers' party government, but uh, they like kind of found like a, a way to like live together, Lula and our, uh, the Brazilian elites. Um, so like we, we had this uh, very minimal like uh, social security programs that the workers' party promoted. And like the bankers and all, they were able to go on with their stuff. Um, and, and this is like how they settled things. But this, and so I, I'm getting there. <laughs> Maybe I'm, but yeah, then the situation changed a lot on uh, 2008 um, with the Great Recession, uh, which from the Brazilian point of view was not that bad because. Like the way China recovered was by doing lots of infrastructure, uh, like constructions and all that. And they, of course, bought raw materials from Brazil. So we were not very hard hit uh, at first. Uh, but then uh, things started looking dim for Latin America because the main imperialist countries, they were, of course, very hard hit by this capitalist crisis that goes way back. It's just like one spike. Uh, of this recurring like crisis that the system has and we're right now under another of these big ones but then uh they decided that they couldn't coexist with the nationalist bourgeois governments uh, in uh in latin america so it wasn't just chavez anymore like they wanted to get rid of everyone and put new liberal like uh governments in their place that would like send money back to the uh, to, to US, to Europe. So it started, uh, at least from uh, our party's analysis, like the first event uh, that uh, showed that change in direction was the coup in Honduras uh, in 2009. It's a very small country, but that... Uh, like is a very good example of what was going to happen in the whole continent. Um, Honduras like had this sort of parliamentary coup where the Supreme Court uh, told the nationalists, and, and this guy is a very interesting guy, Manuel Zelaya. Uh, like he, he he is actually a landowner who became president. And you think, oh well, this guy is of course reactionary, uh, and he was like he had no communist ideology or anything, but. Of course, he had like his interests, and then this put him at like uh, against like U.S. interests and other powerful countries' interests. And we recently interviewed him, and like these days, he has like this all this uh, socialist background, communist. Like he he read a lot of stuff, but back then, uh, he he was just like a guy trying to do some like uh, defend the interests of his own country. But yeah, that put him in a very bad position and he was like ousted. And actually Lula offered the Brazilian embassy for him to stay. So there was like cooperation and there is to this day cooperation between these uh, nationalist governments in Latin America. But anyway, the, there was this coup in Honduras, uh, in, then in Paraguay in 2012, uh, there was a parliamentary coup uh, there as well. In Argentina, uh, Macri was elected in uh, very weird. Actually, there is like this uh, documentary about Cambridge Analytica that mentioned like how they used the Argentinian elections as a playground or uh, like it was their, their one of their f first operations. And, and it goes on like uh, there was a coup in Brazil, a pressure in Venezuela, of course, constant. But in 2014, it ran out of control. Like the far right guys were uh, like burning people. You had like Guaido and all that crazy stuff. And of course, like very recently, there was the, the coup in Bolivia, uh, which they recovered, but it was still like the, the same uh, movement. Like uh, basically, in our understanding, imperialism like 
trying to do internally like uh, damage control. So uh, both in the US and in Europe, trying to handle the, the situation uh, while like the like doing uh, the neoliberal uh, policies uh, in Latin America and other poor countries. So, so, so yeah, this is like the uh, from the international perspective, the, the uh, like background for the situation in, in Brazil. So, uh, like we for for this reason, like we we can't say uh, uh, that the uh, class collaboration policies uh, actually properly failed from the masses point of view uh, in, in Brazil because the, the the workers party government was interrupted by by like a, a coup so so um, we like we, we haven't seen to the end uh, like the limitations of these policies the, the from the people's point of view like the government was going on and then it was like suddenly interrupted with all these Corruption charges, uh, of course, like the media monopolies uh, played a big role uh, in that. But uh, Operação Lava Jato these days, like, is is uh, uh, like very demoralized with all the like leaked documents and leaked uh, talks. So it was cl clearly political persecution. There were no proofs. Uh, but yeah, as as I mentioned earlier, they they had already done that before to the workers' party government uh, with Men Salon. It, that also like had no proofs, and they were able to arrest some leadership. But they like intensified that after 2008, after the recession, and in 2019, Dilma was deposed, and later on in 2018, Lula, which is like very very popular, was arrested, removed illegally from the elections which facilitated the election of Bolsonaro. Um, so, yeah, what happened during the coup uh, is that to, like, to uh, gain um, like, support to overthrow the Workers' Party government, the traditional right wing had to go way, way beyond their political like uh, their place in the political spectrum and like they actually promoted anti-communist propaganda uh uh yeah and like very they gave gave room for these people claiming like that the military dictatorship should come back and this is where bolsonaro is born sort of like he he's like uh a congressman for 30 years so he's not an outsider at least like trump in a way is an outsider but bolsonaro presented him as an outsider but like he is a politician for 30 years uh, it's a, a bit crazy but uh yeah like he he was basically a joke in 2016 but uh after all these uh like corruption scandals uh, what lava jato did uh, like they they didn't actually destroy the workers party because it still like has a lot of popular support but they uh, there was no uh, like traditional brazilian bourgeois candidates that could face uh, the workers party uh, electoral force like of course the workers are demobilized there there, uh, there was uh, some struggle against the coup but the, the left overall was not like bringing it full force uh but still like the the bourgeois was in a like the traditional politicians they were in a very uh tough situation because they basically imploded the whole political system to get the workers party out of government like uh saying that everybody's corrupt uh everything is corrupt and whatnot and of course the only viable candidate for them was uh bolsonaro uh which like defended uh, all these crazy far right policy uh, ideas like uh, order and the military government that was not corrupt. I don't know where they brought that over, but yeah. Um, so this is like uh, the context and, and, and 
in which we are. And uh, as, as Tiago pointed out, like after Lula's arrest, um, he well he stayed more than five hundred days in prison, uh, got out, but was still like uh, unable to run for any like public position or, or any like political position. And just recently, he he like he. It, it's not that the uh, the processes against him uh, were completely uh, invalidated, they, they, uh, but they were just like moved from like this partial judge to another uh, like court that will give him a, an honest judgment, which is like a farce because uh, if, if you have no proofs, there is nothing to judge, right? Uh, but yeah, this is like basically. Uh, political manipulation. They are saying that Lula is free to to run, but they they have like a, a trump card. So if he if anything goes out of control, like the, the of course it, uh, uh, I make this bet here. Like this uh, this uh, like processes they they will uh, show up again. So they're just like saving it for later. So uh, yeah, with. Lula now uh, available to run elections. The, the whole situation in the country changed um, because uh, what what we have now, as I said, like the traditional poli uh, like political class, <laughs> they don't have any viable candidates. They only have Bolsonaro, but they they dislike uh, Bolsonaro a lot because he was actually like put there to implement neoliberal policies. But he's failing very hard at that. Uh, of course, um, because like his bases are like these uh, uh, small uh, petit bourgeois, like uh, small business own owners, um, and uh, the, like it, when he tries to defend like the interests of these people, he end up, end, ends up going against. Uh, like the major interest, major imperialist interests, but for instance, like uh, uh, the privatization of Petrobras, which is our gas and oil company, is like one of the major things that uh, we can see that imperialist forces are pressuring for. Uh, all, all the corruption charges against Lula and the Workers' Party are related to that company, and um, yeah, like. It is a very important and strategic resource, but recently, like uh, Bolsonaro uh, went on and uh, like stopped the uh, fuel fuel prices from rising, which is like very not known, a uh, very known neoliberal thing to do. And he was like being criticized by the liberals and all that. But what he's like, of course, he doesn't care about any people. He's like killing everybody from COVID. Uh, he like really like <laughs> doesn't care about anything, but uh, he cares about like his political survival. So he he he, know, he he noticed that the fuel price would put like truck drivers, which staged several strikes back in Brazil, like back in 2018 and in other years, and it would put like many people against him because if you raise up the fuel price in brazil we don't have like uh, trains uh, it's mostly uh, the commodities distribution is mostly based on truck so you raise the price of everything uh, and like well aware that this would put him in a very bad position he froze the the fuel prices uh, and like so far he he was not able to do all the privatizations and all like the attacks on the Brazilian economy he was supposed to. So, the, uh, like imperialism and uh, the Brazilian ruling class, they have a problem. They have to remove Bolsonaro, but they don't. They can't put the power back in the hands of the left wing that they already removed because it was not working for them. So, uh, it, basically, what we see now in Brazilian media is that they are trying to talk with Lula, so who is the centrist guy that you're going to cooperate with? Like, they are trying to like seek some dialogue with Lula to see like, hey, uh, we, we're giving you like some political space, but 
yeah, like uh, only if you bring us in and whatnot. Um, and it, it is a, a very uh, funny situation. And uh, at the same time, they are also trying to come up with their own candidate. There is like Sao Paulo's gover governors, João Doria, who bought like a very small sample of vaccines from China and also recently announced uh, br the Brazilian vaccines. But of course, this is all propaganda. Like uh, the vaccination pro program in Brazil is a total disaster. Very few people were vaccinated. I think like a bit more than 5% in the whole country. And the vaccine doses are already like coming to an end. So yeah, they, they, they are like trying to come up with a name. But uh, the fact of the matter is that the political situation right now is Bolsonaro against Lula. Like Lula was the target of the coup. Uh, Lula is a major political figure. Everybody knows him. He would have won, won the 2018 elections and whatnot. And he represents the left. Like, as I said, he, he did not have time to fail. Like, he was removed from, from power before, he, like, before the Workers' Party could actually fail. Uh, so he's still like very powerful, re basically represents the left. And Bolsonaro, current, currently in power, uh, like uh, represents like the, the, the Brazilian bourgeois in a sense. Uh, it's like the, they're only viable candidates. Uh, all, all the other ones were completely like demoralized and destroyed. So uh, coming to the other two questions, then I'll like try to talk about it briefly. Uh, what we've been standing for in Brazil is for like uh, Lula to announce immediately his candidacy for 2022 uh, elections uh, be, uh, and organize that in a way that it mobilizes people uh, against our, our ruling elites. Because we know, uh, well, it might not be Bolsonaro, but it might be Bolsonaro. Like, uh, if we. If we're not uh, mobilized, uh, the 2022 elections uh, will go in the direction of the of the coup d'état. So, uh, just to uh, explain what I want to say about that is that in 2016, like we had the coup, and the coup didn't stabilize. Like the, the vice president was very unpopular. Uh, like he he uh, like he. Uh, Unlocked like the uh, fuel prices because Petrobras had subsidized our, our fuel prices. Like he made it run by market, uh, every like unemployment. So even before Bolsonaro, in these two years, 2016, 2018, that uh, like uh, Temer's government was like completely destructive for the working class in Brazil and the poor people in general. Uh, and like they, they couldn't stabilize the coup, they couldn't destroy. The workers party uh and yeah they couldn't place a, a stable neoliberal regime uh, and like this is what bolsonaro is right now it's like a, a crisis government they're trying to stabilize the situation but the, the further they go they either uh, either have like to go even more to the right uh, or in the end they will have like otherwise uh oh, sorry i'm like losing track here but yeah uh like the, their way out of the like this whole crisis is going further into the right, and they are running out of options. The Brazilian ruling class. Um, so yeah, this this is why uh, we we understand that uh, like we have like to organize ourselves behind uh, Lula's candidacy uh, because he still like has a, a lot of power, and we uh, like. He's very well known, at least from the electoral point of view, uh, which is like something that unfortunately uh, is how like the, well, maybe the left in general works, but people tend to think only in terms of elections. When is the like election? How do we? So we think that the, uh, the, the way to like transform this uh, uh, electoral policy into actually something meaningful that can mobilize people is to organize behind like Lula's uh, candidacy and only him, of course. We were very opposed to uh, the Workers' Party candidacy in 2018 because it actually camouflaged the coup. Instead of like saying Lula is our candidate, let's go to the end. Like you can't arrest Lula. They improvised another candidate that was like 
uh, ready, like he, he would certainly fail because well, people would have to know him uh, and all that. And he was not not a working class uh, candidate as well, not nearly as popular as Lula. So we think that to transform the uh, 2022 elections into an event that actually denounces the coup, denounces like the class differences and like ex explain in the clearest way possible what's going on in Brazil is like to organize the whole left behind Lula and make like strong opposition against Bolsonaro, which we think is like the only viable candidate for the right now. But of course, the situation might develop. So for the short, in the short term, this is like our tactic. Uh, unfortunately, it's been hard to organize that with other uh, members of the Brazilian left. Of course, people have different views. Uh, they think that the uh, Workers' Party government made a lot of compromises with the ruling class, with the bankers, with imperialism. Uh, but we, we think that this is like a very, uh, like it's, it's not wrong, of course, we, we agree with that, but uh, it, it's like a po politically uh, problematic. And we can see that from uh, PSTU, which is like another leftist party in Brazil, uh, during the corruption uh, charges and during the coup in 2016, they came up with the words um, out with everyone, uh, which basically is like, if you're a small group of people with a uh, sign out with everyone in the middle of all these far right guys, you're just like summing, <laughs> adding numbers to, uh, it, it doesn't, uh, explain to the uh, population like what are the opposing forces what's going on in the current political situation so yeah even we, if we what i mean to say with that is even if we don't fully agree with like the workers party program as Thiago mentioned like how to go beyond it even if we don't fully agree we fully support lula's candidacy and only lula's candidacy from the workers party perspective and up, up, like we want a popular uh, candidacy that really opposes Bolsonaro. And in our understanding uh, from them on, like, uh, we feel that Lula won't be able to do as much class collaboration as he did in the past, because the situation is very polarized in Brazil, and like, if he wants to survive politically, he will have to uh, concede into the working class's demands. And if you don't, and then uh, this is like how I think we, we go moving forward. Like, uh, if, the, the, if we have, like, if we can mobilize enough to put the Workers' Party back in power and the Workers' Party fails to deliver, then I think that's when our, like, our role comes in. Like, I like to say that it's like the, the sort of like Kerensky moment because, like, you have like this moderate government uh, in, in the revolutionary Russia, and then like they side with the Tsar and repress the people. And then this is the moment that the people are like, but we put you in power, like how <laughs> are you hitting us? And then it's when like the situation uh, moves forward. But yeah, currently we, we think that uh, standing with Lula and denouncing the coup, denouncing the political persecution is the, the way out uh, of this crisis. Yeah. Uh, so sorry for being very long and confusing. Maybe. No, no, it was very. Thanks a lot. It was very, very interesting. Um, uh, we already have one question here in the chat from Walter. So, if you uh, earlier, uh, Fabio mentioned the, constitu the constitution from 1988 or 89, actually, isn't it? So, is it possible that a PTA government after Bolsonaro might seek to change it or create a new constitution as a means of placating the working classes, such as in Chile? So, this, uh, yes, I, I can actually. Uh, bu build in on this question to you. It's uh, because it, it's the question of. Um, uh, what tasks are 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 um, um, 
uh, before the the working class because you mentioned you mentioned uh, because it's a very in this in Finnish context uh, it has to be stressed that we are in uh, in uh, in the in the in the in the global south so uh, and we which has uh, which is of course um, uh, well uh, under semi-colonial rule from imperialistic countries so the revolutions there are are have different tasks that have for example in Finland which uh, is part of the imperialist center uh, it, it is the periphery of the imperialist center but it's still it's still part of the of the the imperialist center so i, w- I will build on this because uh, what are these tasks i mean is 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 like uh, is 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 uh, are, are these tasks in the sense of of um breaking the the current political regime so and in in that sense i mean there, there are bourgeois uh, tasks to be accomplished. So anti-colonial, anti, anti-imperialist, and uh, democratic uh, demands that certainly are involved. N- not necessarily socialist, still. But on the other hand, as you mentioned, uh, the the national ruling class or the national bourgeoisie is so weak that the 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 workers' movement have to take 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 these tasks forward, which is a a text case example of of what Trotsky called uh, the of Trotsky's combined uh, the theory the theory of the, of combined development. So, and th- that's an interesting question. I mean, um, is there the the test that is at hand? It's simply a government change. Is there uh, uh, perspectives of of a regime? change if so is there uh, a national bourgeoisie is there an anti-imperialist bourgeoisie or is this purely uh, on 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 the working class movements and and so on so the, uh, this would would be a good question maybe to put in perspective with other countries like chile yeah um, yeah i i think that i uh that there are like many basic things to accomplish uh for instance like land reform brazil is still like uh, largely like brazilian land is largely placed in the hands of very very few people and that that's like mostly the case in latin american countries uh and i imagine like in other poor countries as well and there are like many uh, democratic changes uh, uh, as well like um we we have like this uh, weird thing, which is like the this constitutional court, the the Supreme Court, which like can arbitrarily change the rules of the game. Uh, it's like the the bourgeois less resource. So if things go out of control, we place these guys. It's like the U.S. It's it's a bit crazy. Uh, I I don't know how many countries have this, but I know the United States. Uh, and we also have the, the, the two chambers, which is something that our party is opposed. And like these are things that Chavez solved in the uh, in Venezuela. Like uh, he didn't expropriate the bourgeoisie, but uh, like they have like unicameral uh, parliament. Um, he reformed the army, which is like very very important in pretty much all the Latin American countries that come from military dictatorships. So, like, our army, of course, uh, in this recent week, you'll see this political theater of the uh, generals in Brazil, like, resigning because Bolsonaro is out of control. But, oh, who elected Bolsonaro? Like, he's the army guy. It's, uh, it's, they're just, like, trying to make this pressure game. So, um, yeah, there are uh, uh, many... uh, like uh, the media monopolies as well. So many uh, democratic uh, changes that need to be done. And actually the Workers' Party uh, put forward this idea in 2018. They were like going for a constitutional uh, assembly. Uh, And then uh, in the second round, when there was Adagi and Bolsonaro, they were invited in our major media, like Global, uh, and like like the... uh news like the the most famous journalist in brazil he was like uh, asking bolsonaro are you going to do a military coup then bolsonaro was no and then to adagi are you going to do a constitutional assembly and then he was like oh yeah <laughs> and then like they removed that from the the program 
Uh, well, of course, in the end, Workers' Party lost the elections. It didn't matter. But uh, I think that we we certainly need a, like a, a new consti- like a new constitution. Like the, the current constitution simply doesn't work. Like it, it, it describes in very vague terms some important things, such as like every Brazilian has the right to. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say in English, maybe a, a, like a vital uh, minimum wage or like uh, everybody needs uh, uh, like a certain amount of money to eat, live and have like leisure and all that. And that's like, it's in the constitution, but it's so vague that it's not put into practice and there's not even like the slightest effort to put that into practice. Also, like uh, the land reform was not done by the previous constitution. So the uh, and in that sense, like what happened in Chile is interesting, uh, but still like has many, many shortcomings. Of course, they are trying to control the situation. Uh, we see that in Bolivia as well. Like there was a huge mobilization. So in the end, they couldn't hold the, the right wing government in place. But of course, they didn't let Evo come back. So they, they have like this guy, which is like a leftist economist, but wants to. It's like the situation in Argentina, like uh, Cristina Kirchner is being like charged. So they have like Alberto Fernandez, which like can talk to the bankers. And so they're trying to rearrange the situation. Uh, and in Chile, like, uh, we feel that it's sort of the same because the deal constitution, uh, it's uh, like the, the, assemb- the constitutional assembly is very undemocratic. It has like very few people. And to approve anything, you need two thirds of the votes. So this puts a lot of power uh, into designing the new constitution at the hands of like the ruling class. So still, we think it's uh, not enough. But of course, it, it is like uh, if if the Chilean people were not going to the streets, we wouldn't even have that. So it is like an important uh, mechanism, like or. It's just that we have to denounce that it's not it's not really really democratic. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, are there any more questions or comments or interventions? One thing that, at least to me, comes to mind is the, and also re- related with this, with the, the the question of the state. I mean, it, it's in Brazil, as you said. Uh, I mean, it's the bourgeois character of the, of the Brazilian state is 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 uh, is much more flagrant. I think that I mean, uh, for example, the judiciary. I mean, I think it's flagrant that it, it it's a uh, politicization. It's definitely the judicial power in Brazil. I think it's 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 so clearly political that almost uh, anyone denies it. As and it's a bit different than, for example, in Finland when still there is some uh, trust in the, in the judicial institutions and so on so and this is also uh, um lifts up the question of uh, of uh, of tactic i mean also against all i mean against the right and, and not only bolsonaro but the right in general how how if if for example we in finland then that's something that for example the 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 group where where i where i work in proletariat that we we stress a lot is that we can't uh, trust on on state institutions for our own liberation and, and emancipation so and uh, how is the question in Brazil? because i i don't think it's clear that for example in even in the most um in the most um uh in the most uh violent cases i mean i mean there are mps being shot in the streets there there was the case of mariel and and brazil and i mean there's so it's um and i mean uh i think that there i think this question might be um clear in the sense that that the institutions are not going to 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 uh, I mean the judicial and so on. They are not going to answer to the masses' uh, demands and so on. It is, it, it's this thing that that also I mean, it, it clearly puts 
the 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 the, the necessity of, of dismantling the, the state structure in in itself, or at least even if from a a, a a national bourgeois point of view, to to radically uh, change the state. So how how is that? Amongst the, the, I mean, is there trust? I mean, is there hope? I mean, is there any trust in the in the, in the institutions, or or is there like, uh, is there in the terms of the conscious of the masses? I mean, uh, uh, are the institutions rotten and ready to be <laughs> surpassed in the conscience of the masses? The masses, or is, or is there still hope that maybe these regimes can still put, you know, can still. Um, I'm going to go equilibrium, have some, some balance. Or what is the general conscious regarding the constitutions? Uh, regarding regarding the, the, insti the institutions, maybe? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, well, um, yeah, this is like, of course, a, a difficulty that we have. Uh, in person, don't don't even like understand the law or how the institutions work very well. Like the people in general, like um, immediate demands. They're they're not like related to like destroying the institutions because people uh, actually what what you feel like talking to the people is that they don't even want to know how it works. Like I, I want. Uh, it's like what happened in Paraguay, like where to many people it was like out of the blue, but like the like when like your family starts to die and from COVID and like there is no hospitals, people like are like this is like this has surpassed anything that we can consider like human. Uh, we will burn down uh, like the like the the parliament and stuff, but. Uh, then, uh, uh, of course, uh, like comes the negotiation and, and uh, how that ends. Like, yeah. Uh, then this is like our, our role, like uh, trying to like educate the masses and point like who who are the like the the enemies and like who like how how is our society divided and and all that. Uh, but yeah, I like. Uh, I feel that uh, uh, our party is sort of an isolated voice, unfortunately, in uh, opposing uh, the traditional right wings. Because uh, recently there there was like this uh, propaganda of uh, the governors as opposing to the president that the governors are responsible and they're doing all they can for the pandemic, but the the evil president doesn't send them money and uh, and they can't do anything about it so that there is this like thing that they're trying <laughs> as like the bourgeois they, they are very like they, they try to present them as, as green the eh? uh, green figure uh, like environmental friendly so we say that they, they're trying to recycle the trash like the political trash like <laughs> they're trying to make them uh inter appealing again <laughs> Uh, and this like happened with the judiciary, which is like insane. Of course, who uh, blocked Lula from going from running in 2018? It was like the Supreme Court, the Constitutional Court, and now they are like putting Sergio Moro, which is like the main judge behind uh, corruption charges against the Workers' Party and Lula. They're putting him under suspicion uh, because like of partial being a partial judge, and then you're like, well. Uh, I, I, it's all like uh, they they only did it, they only did this now because it's like unsustainable. <laughs> it's like you can't not do this, but it, it doesn't make them progressive, as you said. Like the institutions, they will won't do anything for us. But right now, there is this climate, that, at least from the media monopolies, and unfortunately, some uh, people on the left they are falling into this. Uh, basically, like promoting these traditional right-wing figures, the judiciary and all and all stuff. So uh, we feel that this consciousness is not very strong in the masses. We we do our best to denounce them, and we feel that Lula uh, in this like uh, moderate left is the figure that most uh, opposes like a traditional right-wing politician. Because, for instance, we had 
uh, a couple of uh, pro-democracy uh, manifests from right-wing politicians. They're like, we're against Bolsonaro because he's not democratic and whatnot. And like, for, for instance, Adagi, which was the uh, Workers' Party candidate in 2018, he signed up for that, uh, that manifest. But Lula said, I, I have nothing to talk with these guys. They organized the coup and whatnot. So in that sense, like uh, he, he uh, as he was like targeted by these people, like, it is completely insane for him to sit at, at a table with them. So um, yeah, again, coming back to my main point, like this is why we feel that uh, standing with Lula is uh, very important to like class consci- consciousness overall. Like uh, at least in the electoral field, yeah. At this moment, not not yet, but this is something that we are like actively promoting. Uh, like this com- uh, the out of Bolsonaro committee here in Finland is part of that effort. We have like this uh, non uh, it's not non partisan, it's like a super partisan like effort, which is like the struggle committees that as we call them. Uh, the name is vague uh, on purpose because it depends on the like struggle that we're having at the moment, which right now is toppling Bolsonaro. But uh, we organize them uh, in many cities uh, in Brazil and also abroad. Uh, and other than that, during the pandemic, we try to organize uh, like health uh, committees so people could like uh, protest. Uh, like as, because the uh, something that we've been trying, uh, of course, we've been called denialists and crazy people in, in Brazil because, uh, unfortunately, many, at least the petit bourgeois left, they, they are very influenced by uh, the, the media monopolies. But uh, what we've been saying is that like, the, the lockdown, the just lockdown uh, as like a way to... Uh, face the pandemic is insufficient because like at least in Brazil like that there is no Kela like they, they're giving like 200 Brazilian reais to people now 200 and, and like the the inflation is 5% but the inflation for food is 15% so it, it's like people are starving and then you see like the the police officers hitting these uh, street merchants that sell them things on the sidewalks and then, like, you see, like, Petit Bourgeois left guys on Twitter. Yeah, hit these guys without the masks. And I'm like, what the hell? So, like, uh, these health committees, like, the, they, that we are promoting, they, they have this uh, role uh, of, like, for instance, okay, we closed do- down all the schools. But many kids, uh, they had their meals only because of the schools, because people are too poor. So you need to open the schools for the meals and like you can't just close close down things so uh, in, in like some cities we were able to like to protest and this is like something that can be done at local level you protest with the mayor and then like uh so th- this has been a very interesting uh, effort but of course we are a very s- small party uh like our organized core so the extent of that activity like it has like a few thousand people but it's not that big um, other than that, we have like uh, Kuchi, uh, like the unified uh, union. Like uh, it's not unified anymore because, of course, it's the uh, trade union center. Yeah, the trade union center. Yeah, like Esako in fin- in Finland. Uh, uh, 
and uh, it is like well, it, it's where Lou uh, got famous, and it's like a huge uh, like uh, it, it uh, bridges like most of the Brazilian working class, a very important uh, organization. But right now, it, it is like uh, their main policy was. Uh, for, for the pandemic was like everybody let's go home uh, we will close down the like the the unions because everybody's at home but in practice that people are working people are going to public transportation and now your un union is closed and you can't even complain because the the the, the union guys they they like went back home to the lockdown and you're working in very bad conditions uh, but uh, we feel that like if we can uh, and this is like uh, back, uh, again related to the tactic. Uh, like we feel that if we really press uh, for uh, Lula's candidacy in a way, uh, because like if the if the mood, if the overall mood is cold, uh, I don't know. Maybe in two thousand and twenty-two they will say, "Oh, okay, so Lula indeed was corrupt, and there was this other." apartment somewhere else and he can't run and if the situation is cold maybe like people will just accept this uh, but we feel that if we create a, a movement around this around this uh, anti-coup uh, politics we, we can like create this dual power structure we can like people will be organized and maybe like the uh, trade union center will be stronger of course we have like the landless movement uh, which is like su surprisingly moderate uh, right now because like go Bolsonaro government like persecuted many of them, but still like they try to reach for the judiciary, for parliament and all that, of course, to no avail. But yeah, we feel that the situation will only be uh, really like uh, clear if we have like this clear, because of course we know that uh, there is this like Bolsonaro Lula conflict, uh, uh, and it's clear for us. But if you look at the Brazilian media and you're not like actively following politics, you might feel that this Sao Paulo governor, very right wing guy, is against Bolsonaro as well. And you might feel that this other guy that said that Bolsonaro is evil, he's very against Bolsonaro. So we need to create a situation where we can see okay, this is the left, this is the right come with us on the left uh, and right now the situation is blurry and I guess uh, yeah. so answering your question we're trying to we're trying our best to build this dual power structure yeah. yes thank you uh, any more comments questions interventions on the on the on the whole I think that I mean in the it's a very interesting, well, very also very problematic. Of course, it's 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 uh, it's people's lives that there are at stake. Of course, every day they're in Brazil, and then it's it's a very troublesome situation. But it's also very interesting in, in the sense that, and with very with um, with um, potential, I think. I think it seems that uh, at least from what I've been gathering, I think that there is a there is room for. For uh, there's m lots of potential for um, a revolutionary working class movement, since I mean we have social difficulties. Every everyone here knows, uh, even if superficially, how how the social contradictions in Brazil are are so so are glaring. I mean, it's 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 hard to find a, a country that is more divided into a small elite and uh, and uh, a huge poor population. And uh, but still, we have a bourgeoisie ruling class that it seems to me, if I understood correctly, to be weak and divided. So we have, uh, of course, there's a, there's the imperialism issue because uh, when the the ruling class dependent on on, uh, on uh, imperialism sometimes enters in contradiction with 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 sectors of of, of the, the 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 Brazilian bourgeoisie and the petty bourgeoisie especially is also also suffers from this. Uh, 
So, and the, and the one question that I, I would like also to ask is regarding the army. I mean, the the, the thing in Brazil, uh, it's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the idea that I have is that there, there's little different. I mean, the, the, the army is still the same of the of the period from 64 to, to, to the 80s. And uh, so that's, that's a very interest, interesting question because... In all uh, progressive uh, uh, processes, I'm not uh, referring to, to, to socialist revolutions uh, or, or uh, proletarian revolutions, but even in this national national uh, bourgeois uh, governments throughout Latin America, I mean, uh, Venezuela has been a, has been able to to survive precisely because Chavez and Maduro were able to. Uh, put the army to reform the army and put the the army and the police firmly under under their rule. So I think that's the question: is is the army divided? I mean, is uh, uh, what's what's the the situation in the in the army front, so to speak? Uh, well, yeah, uh, I feel that there is a division. But just to explain briefly how reactionary our army is. They to this day celebrate the '64 revolution, <laughs> revolution, uh, and yeah, it, it was uh, on the 31st of March. We actually this was a huge political victory, at least for our party. We because after Lula being able to be reelected, the far right was like uh, more active, and they called for. Uh, manifestations like celebrating the military coup because it's like a uh, major event for them. But uh, the, the generals, uh, there is like this military club in Rio. They organize a dinner every year, uh, even before like Bolsonaro. So for them, uh, like inside the army, it is a celebrated event because they prevented the communists from taking over Brazil and making it an authoritarian uh, regime. <laughs> So that's their their narrative to this day. I don't know like how the foot soldier is trained, but uh, like this is like the the theory, like the the ideas uh, in the in the generals' heads. If you follow like uh, the actually, th this is like a very good habit. Uh, I read uh, that there is this website Sociedade Militar, which is like. Uh, military intelligence. I don't know <laughs> if you can say that, but the, like it is where they publish their ideas and whatnot. And yeah, like Bolsonaro's vice president, General Mourão, he is like uh, he has this stance, like anti-communist uh, ideas. So the uh, well, yeah, we can like remember uh, when Lula was. Uh, like when when the Supreme Court was deciding whether Lula should run should be able to run or not, uh, like uh, there is this famous tweet from uh, General Vilas Boas, which is like a guy that is so bad, like from health perspective, that he is like um, I think he's barely living these days. Like, uh, uh, but yeah, like uh, he still like has a lot of authority, and like he just posted. Uh, on tweets like the army is, is ready to defend the interests of the Brazilian people and stability and whatnot. I can't remember exactly the tweet, but he was basically sending a message to the Supreme Court like control the situation because uh, otherwise we will intervene. And he recently publicized his memoirs and he said like that he went on talk to the other generals, talked to the judiciary, and they like planned that tweet or that like public manifestation. So they, they are still very politically active and they are like a very reactionary force uh, in the country. So yeah, that would have to be certainly reformed. Like uh, our like the end of the military dictatorship like didn't bring any justice. It didn't like in in, in a way it's like. Italy, when the fascist regime was toppled, they kept all the judiciary there, and then you're like, well, uh, but yeah, like, it, it, it's in Brazil, like, we kept all these guys, and there is a division, but it's a, a very weird one, at least. Of course, there, there are progressive people everywhere, like, even uh, 
like okay. left leftist people, isolated people inside the army and inside police forces, uh, which is contradictory. But yeah, you, you, but the institution of of course is still like a very reactionary institution. Um, but the, the the major clash that there is, at least in the police and the army, is between uh, like far right Bolsonaro supporters and like the traditional army that defends the bourgeois interests. Uh, and, and like since Bolsonaro like rose uh, like the, the very small base that Bolsonaro has, uh, like the the core is uh, like from police and army officers. Like, just so you understand, because here in Finland I think it's different. But we have like a huge professional army in Brazil, like more than a million people. Uh, so and Bolsonaro is like mostly a, a union guy from for them, like a. He's like Lula for police officers and army men, uh, like fighting for better salaries, better like rights. Uh, and even like in his government, the neoliberal guys were like, hey, we need to cut expenses from the army. Like, let's cut these retirement pensions and whatnot. And then he was like, no, nope, <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> because, well, of course, if he does that, then he, he will lose even his, like, his core supporters. So there, there is this division, and I think it, it can be uh, exploited uh, in a way. Uh, it is a very contradictory situation. I think that uh, one, one of the best examples is what happened early 2020, uh, like uh, in Ceará, which is like a northern state in, in Brazil. Uh, the police officers went into strike because of they, they wanted better salaries. And, uh, well, like, suddenly all the left was like, uh, damn, like, uh, uh, like, this is not a strike, it is like uh, an insurrection, the, the police officers can't strike and whatnot. And we were like, like, uh, like first of all, the rights to strike should be available to everyone. Like, I don't agree with the police and their demands. I don't like we defend the extinction of the military police, which is like something a legacy from the military dictatorship. We have several layers of repressive authorities in Brazil, uh, but but still, like uh, we defend their right to strike in the same way that we defend anyone's right to strike. Because actually, in Brazil right now, for instance, if the uh, metro drivers want to go on strike. The judiciary comes in and say, this is an essential service. You have to operate at least 20%. And then if you don't, you're disavowed. So the right to strike is something that, uh, funnily enough, it was more permissive in the military dictatorship than it is like right now. Because uh, after many constitutional reforms, they, they found like, that the, there are these legal mechanisms. So to say, people are very afraid to strike. So in that sense, as we defend like free speech, because of course we don't stand with like Twitter censoring anyone because we know that it will fire back at us. We, we defend uh, the, both army and police officers that their right to organize. And we understand that this like increases, of course, the, uh, the contradictions inside these institutions. And what happened at this event in Seada is that this a uh, local major politi politician, uh, Cid Gomes, which is like brother of Ciro Gomes, which is like a, a, a very anti-workers party guy. He presents him as leftist, as like a national development uh, bourgeois, but he's like actually a, a super right-wing guy that represents this very reactionary forces that own lots of land in like Brazil's countryside. But anyway, like uh, just so you understand, like there were like maybe a hundred, maybe two hundred police officers like armed uh on a strike demanding better salaries. And then this guy, uh, this is like the amount of power they imagine they have. Like the guy is a senator, he flew from Brasilia to this town in Ceará, and he was like stop the show uh like he, he they they really act as kings or like <laughs> some sort of novelty like uh he was trying to like control his police and then he uh, drove like this small uh 
a truck against the police and then he was actually shot by one guy but the strike was disbanded he is fine but this goes on to show like how like the situation is out of control like uh uh, like and and for us this this organization like the more disorganized the repressive forces are the better it is for us so in that sense that like the, this uh these contradictions are, are very interesting but unfortunately uh i don't see any like because chavez of course came from the army i don't think there is anything like that remotely like that in brazil right now well if you talk uh, to uh, pessoal uh, guys, they will actually tell you the opposite. Uh, like in Rio de Janeiro, which famously the police kills hundreds of poor people every year, uh, the vice mayor candidate for uh, PSOL, which is another leftist party, was a colonel from the military police. They are. You have to like think, okay, you have like this very. Uh, deadly institution that kills poor people and the guy made all the way up to coronal ranks and like this guy is, is democratic the foot soldier no this food the foot soldier is like far right bolsonaro supporter but the guy that climbed all the ladder that guy is very progressive and yeah <laughs> i don't know how that can be but uh yeah this is like at least from my perspective the, the situation we, we're in but I'll, 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 so just to wrap it up, like of course the situation can develop very quickly. Uh, we have like experience in our party, um, like some comrades did the demonstrations against the dictatorship in uh, in the late eighties, and uh, yeah, it is like in this industrial city of Volta Redonda in Rio de Janeiro, in Rio de Janeiro state. And during the protests, of course, the military government sent the army, uh, not the police back then, sent the army to control the demonstration. And uh, like the, the army guys, they were local people. So the, the workers, they, they started like, hey, uh, like, I, I know your mother. Are you going to shoot me here? Like, uh, you're my neighbor and whatnot. So I uh, know how this situation can can develop like and yeah actually that's that strike was successful like the the soldiers they like after this mess they refused to repress the people so it's like an interesting experience okay uh more comments or uh questions we still have some time so if someone wants to go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, I can't say for sure. Uh, oh, we have one comrade from the Navy. Uh, that, well, he, like, I don't know if, like, he is, like, a, a militant, or actually, I just met him once at the, at the party, like, uh, place or base, I don't know, <laughs> uh, uh, our building. And, yeah, he said that in the Navy, pretty much everyone aligns with uh, Bolsonaro, Bolson, like Bolsonaro's ideology. Um, basically, because as I said, like they defend his material, in, their material interests, like better salaries, better conditions, and whatnot. But yeah, uh, he said that overall, uh, you have like to smuggle the because people will uh, there is not because since Brazil is not officially a dictatorship there is no censorship officially but uh, apparently people will denounce you like the, the other soldier will say oh this guy tried to give me this, this leaflet 
Uh, so it, it, it's like very restricted in that sense. Um, but yeah, like uh, we feel that the like the polarization uh, in the in the society like can uh, can oh, of course it, it, it infiltrates everything. Uh, for instance, we have heard a lot that these religious communities in Brazil they are super reactionary. They are the basis of Bolsonarism and whatnot. But uh, then, like when when they need to struggle for like. Um, a better like this emergency payments uh, again for COVID, or they go in clash against Bolsonaro, and we have like seen that, and of course in very small numbers because our party is small. You see that the the ideology goes away like when when you like are in this like very basic struggle, and I feel that the army is the same like. They are connected to the society, even if they are a repressive force. They have mothers, cousins, brothers, and like uh, it's all tied. So the, the further the society is polarized, um, I, I think this polarization will inf infiltrate the these like institutions. I think it happened in uh, I can't remember it was Ecuador last year. Um, that the army like fought with the police like uh, because the police was sent to repress the people and then the army like the uh, there was this like uh, situation so yeah so to speak but currently well I, I like to um, to think of like the Cuban revolution that the guys they were maybe too optimistic like they went with the sheep there uh, let's Let's like take the the country with a hundred guys. Everything went wrong, and well, they started like from the mountains, like talking in the radio, doing what they can, and and of course, like there were protests in Havana, protests everywhere, um, and it, it paid off. Like at at the end, they, they had like a massive move movement, but the the core of the people, uh, uh, like it was like very very small. Um, but yeah, I, I feel that the situation will probably develop in, in, a, in a similar way. Yes, uh, Gustavo. Gustavo was asking. You're muted. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for the invitation. Uh, thank you, Thiago, and everyone. Thank you for being here, Fabio, uh, Yuhu, uh, who else, and everyone. I'm sorry. Walter, Yuka. Well, I just would like to, to add, uh, uh, make a very, very quick comment regarding the distribution of, of uh, material within the army. Uh, we have to remember that after doing uh, uh, the dictatorship, there was a purge. There were people, there were a lot of military people in our army that were uh, left or affiliated to the Communist Party, but there was a purge during the dictatorship. And, uh, and the, the, the army in Brazil, uh, <laughs> uh, has been extremely violent uh, with their own members when they're caught. We have to remember that torture still goes on in, in Brazilian military. I used to, to, to work with the, the group uh, Tortura Nunca Mais, uh, Torture uh, Never Again. And um, I remember having people, uh, uh, there was a couple, that's one of the, the examples, a couple whose son was killed. Uh, inside the military facility. He was in a military school. He, uh, he was a cadet, and, uh, and he was killed, uh, a victim of torture. So, uh, so just uh, to remember that the, the, the situation, uh, we, we kind of, after, the, 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 after 1985, <coughs> after the end of the dictatorship, uh, we, we never really had, uh, not even like the transitional justice. No one was brought uh, to justice, to face justice. And uh, uh, we never uh, uh, prosecuted anyone, any, 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 any military that committed crimes, any type of crime, uh, let alone the crimes against humanity. And um, so we kind of forgot the military. Uh, one of the uh, PT, the workers' parties, uh, pact, you know, in, uh, in order to, 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 to get to, to power to the executive was that not touching the military, right? And, and for years and years and years, we forgot them there. They were doing their thing. 
And the idea that torture is a legit method it's still like very, very it's still alive in our uh, I have I have family members who are in the military and they think that uh, torture is something that it's legit so uh, so there is a lot of violence you know among themselves you know they're they're extremely violent it's a it's a very complicated uh, 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 situation or uh, it's very complicated to infiltrate people to have that kind of discussion you know within the military that's all I would like to, to add for now. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Gustavo, Gustavo is also Brazilian. He, he currently lives in Portugal. But he also also a follower. Also a follower. I have it evident concerned follower of the, the <laughs> Brazilian situation. So but yes, and still regarding this, I mean it, it is a professional army. So uh, I guess that that also as uh, as uh, I mean in Portugal if, if we talk about Portugal I mean the army was uh, was central in the, in the Portuguese revolution in 74 uh, and the the, the coup d'etat I mean the the, the 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 taking over of power in the 25th of April of 74 I mean the, the movement that did that take over of power the uh, armed forces movement of of captains where they were like middle officers uh it started basically <laughs> basically also because petty petty stuff like like their uh, their wages and so on but uh, but yes but it was it was um uh, a conscript army so that changes of course that changes that changes a, a little bit the game because it's it's i mean the, the people who were there they weren't well they were supposed to stay for four years of course it was a long long military service but but still they they didn't forget i mean they were not professional soldiers so they were conscripts and so on and of course it's uh, it's slower to to the maybe the social contradictions to reach a professional class who's work is basically to repress and but yes uh, any more comments questions go ahead i was thinking what about uh, what about the other forces uh, i mean what about the 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 other forces of the left of course we have talked about uh, pt then we also have talked about soul soul is um uh, uh, PSOL, so it's uh, it's uh, a left wing party. <laughs> yes, so but they they gather they gather uh, many currents if 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 I understand correctly, and then there's also PSTU, which uh, Fabio also mentioned and uh, suffered from the so from a sort of ultra ultra leftist um uh, position regarding the the impeachment with with the illness. but but. Uh, Fabio, Fabio may, may, may want to say, if you want to say something more about it, maybe. And of course, the the um, yes, the 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 CUT, the CUTE, so the trade union, trade union center. It's and the landless peasant movement is is also 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 important. Maybe if if someone is interested, maybe maybe you can say something about the the, the mistakes and the correct things. Uh, I mean, the difficulties even among the left. You you you. You mentioned that that the the tactics it's not clear uh, regarding Lula and so on. So yes, that could be an interesting interesting way of developing the the, the discussion. Yeah, uh, as I as I like as you pointed out uh, very well, like we saw, yeah, maybe I wasn't fair. Like I, I don't know, like the so elite in Rio, like that put that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, military uh, colonel, like military police colonel, as vice mayor candidate. Um, like I, I can't blame the whole party because, as I said, like different from our party, like they uh, bridge many, many currents, uh, which is like the case for uh, the workers' party as well, uh, on a very large scale, uh, because yeah, the party is, is very big. Um, but in, we've been mostly able to cooperate with uh, uh, Lulist uh, sectors of uh, the Workers' Party because actually there was this uh, huge struggle during the coup inside the Workers' Party because uh, collaboration politics is so strong with the right-wing sector of the party that they 
uh, they were like, uh, let's turn turn the page of the coup and let's go for a new election. So even before the Duma was deposed, there were people inside the Workers' Party that were suggesting, let's run a new election. We can put Lula and Lula can win and whatnot. So that was their reasoning. Like they were not even like, let's defend our president. She got like almost 60 million votes like are you going to throw all that away uh, there were some people like ready to give up and like reach this middle ground but of course like when you're being attacked uh, you don't have the upper upper hand to reach any middle ground like you're just being attacked so you go from okay i'm deposing like my president is being deposed okay let's do new elections then the guy said, no, you're going away. <laughs> and, and like, it's not a negotiation, so you can't concede that easily. But that, that's like how it goes for, for many, uh, many people inside the, the Workers' Party. They still, uh, unfortunately, think that, for instance, uh, Folha de São Paulo, which is a major newspaper, they think that uh, in Brazil, uh, they think that it is like the newspaper of the Workers' Party. The Workers' Party doesn't need a newspaper because for the Sao Paulo is a democratic newspaper, as opposed to Estado de Sao Paulo, which is like a, a more conservative newspaper. But in the end, both of them supported the coup, said that uh, the Uma government had to go. So they, they suffer a lot from this illusion. And uh, we like... Have, we have been working closely with the um, Lula supporters inside the Workers' Party, so that, that, that uh, which is like the, the large, probably the largest sector of the party. Uh, regarding the uh, so, uh, we also like cooperated, like uh, for instance, in these uh, demonstrations against the celebration of the military coup that we did in the. 31st uh, just now uh, many militants came but of course the the position of the the high uh level of the party is very opposed to demonstrations right now because of covid restrictions uh, which like is very unfortunate because as i said like the official policies put the people in a very hard situation and if there are no demonstrations uh, we will only like lose ground we understand the risks but we also understand that uh, like pol politicized people can take precautions and do the manifestations. It's like it's not going to be a rave and <laughs> whatnot. Uh, and we need to defend our rights. But yeah, uh, like uh, usually it's like the, there is a lot of cooperation between the militants of the parties, I feel, but the like the, the high uh, like the bureaucracy of these parties. Um, it's, it's very hard to to talk to. For instance, uh, for instance, uh, with Pesol, uh, there is like this figure which just got into the uh, the party, which is Guilherme Bolus. Uh, he he used to be a militant of the uh, uh, land uh, like urban landless movement, like people. Uh, even the streets uh, so famous in 2014 for opposing the World Cup in Brazil uh, because uh, of course there was like uh, speculation and people being like moved because they were going to build these huge stadiums and whatnot but the, the way that he defended uh, like these people was not like actually defending the interests of the people, but actually attacking the US government that was under attack from the right wing. So he was trying at the same time, like defend these people and promote himself as a, a leading leftist political figure at the expense of the Workers' Party, which like we criticized back then because he created, like he uh, joined like some very reactionary forces in this movement. Uh, there will be no cup or like no World Cup, which is like if I try to describe it here, it's insane because we are in, like in the country of football, and then there is this movement that doesn't want the World Cup to happen, and it's like a leftist movement. So, how will the people of the country of football not want the World Cup to happen? Of course, like poor people couldn't go to the stadiums, but in general, people were very happy that the World Cup was 
uh, going on. And, uh, so yeah, like and, and at that time, like uh, he got like a, a place at Folha de São Paulo as a columnist, columnist uh, like writing there. So you see, like that the, this that there are uh, factions of the left that they they want they, they feel they can grow at the expense of the workers' party collaboration class uh, collab uh, class collaboration policies. But uh, like when they try to attack, uh, what actually happens is that they throw uh, water in, into the right. Uh, so so uh, this is like our criticism to 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 these uh, like other leftist party bureaucrats. But overall, like from the militants, our impression is that uh, there is a lot of cooperation. I don't know if Gustavo wants to say. That. Any anything about that? Yeah, yeah uh, I'm not. I'm not sure if I, you know, if, uh, if if it's exactly the topic that you're bringing. But well, yes, yes, because it has to do. Can you hear me well? I'm sorry. Can yes, you yes. Hear me well. Okay, I was watching. Um, uh, an interview yesterday with uh, José Genuino, the former Workers' Party president, right? And uh, he was pointing out uh, that uh, we are in a, and, and we definitely are in a very di different moment from 2002 when Lula was elected. <coughs> when Lula was able, uh, was very skillful to, to create some kind of a consensus, right? And uh, bringing for uh, 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 for the vice presidency, uh, a wealthy businessman, and signaling that he was not going to touch the market, he was not going to do anything against the military, right? To get uh, that's how he got some kind of stability. And so, Genuine was pointing out that the scenario right now is completely different. We can no longer, I think it's more than clear that we can no longer trust the right. And Genuino said, well, you know, when, when they're winning, fine, they, they play by the rules. When they're losing, you know, they don't care about the rules. And, and now it's very clear. And also that we cannot trust the military. I was, um, uh, I have been following a scholar who is a specialist, has been studying the Brazilian military for many, many, many years. And, uh, and so he's a guy who somehow has uh, uh, some kind of uh, transit within the military. So he, he talks to, to, to the military, to the high ranks, right? Uh, to military scholars as well and he said and he said the same thing you know the military made it very very clear not even us scholars who, who were close to them and studied them uh we couldn't we couldn't really see foresee that what they were doing what they were doing that they, they, they we could no longer we, we could never trust them uh so my comment is that i am not sure by listening to lula's recent uh uh, uh speeches if lula learned this lesson I think he's still trying. He's, he, I don't think that he has uh, realized that it's uh, it's part of his. Uh, I think that it's part of his uh, uh, political view, right? To create this, uh, he still believes that he can create. I believe by watching him that he can create, and he should create this consensus, and uh, that and that's how we're going to change uh, Brazil. But that's my impression. I don't know what Fabio thinks or Thiago. And I think it's important to say, I think it's important to pay attention because, uh, uh, in fact, Genuino, in my opinion, is right. You know, if we, we can't really trust, count on the military. We cannot count on the bourgeoisie. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is, I think now, now it's more than clear. Thank yeah. you. That, that's, uh, yeah, and, uh, uh, I didn't mention it, but Lula recently gave an interview to a very, very right wing guy called Reinaldo Azevedo, which is like, uh, he, he is a fascist, like he is like anti-communist. He wrote two books uh, on the Workers' Party government called, called O País dos Petralhas. I can't translate Petralha, but <laughs> it's like... The country of yeah. this uh, in, no, uh, in Finnish, it would be something like Purnikit, so like red, so <laughs> yeah, okay, and, and uh, yeah, the, so this this guy now he's converted to a leftist ideologue because basically he said that 
Lula's judgment, like Lula's trial was like uh, unfair. And just by saying that, he became like a leftist icon. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, in this interview, like uh, this guy, of course, he, he's like, he speaks. It's funny because he, like he, he says what the Brazilian bourgeois wants to tell Lula. Like he's like, so Lula, who is going to be your vice president? Uh, he's like this owner of this, like, big uh, uh, Brazilian company, like uh, there's this uh, uh, lady that owns uh, Magalu, which is like a big uh, Brazi uh, Brazilian like store, like uh, e-commerce and like physical uh, brick and mortar store uh, like all over the country. And like, of course, there's a lot of identity politics around her. It's a woman, she's a CEO and whatnot. Uh, and then the guy was like, who, who is going to be like your uh, bourgeois partner in Lula? And then like Lula danced around this. Uh, he also asked about privatization. And then Lula said that he thinks that like uh, in certain sectors of the economy, mixed economy uh, can work. So a company is partially owned by the state, partially in the market. So he's showing uh, those things. But at the same time, if you listen to uh, his intervention in Grupo de Puebla, uh, which is like this uh, national bourgeois uh, alliance uh, like uh, in Latin America. So uh, there was Lula, Cristina Kirchner, uh, um, someone from Ecuador, it was not uh, Rafael Correa, but some, someone else I can't remember right now. So they, they were all there. And then in Lula's intervention, he was like, why is, isn't Maduro here? Why isn't Cuba here? Like, we have to oppose imperialism. So, so this is Lula. Like, as I said in the beginning, like, uh, Lula will say what you want to hear. So if you go to, to, to like, a demonstration, at least I, I went in 2016, and he was, like, uh, making a speech, delivering a speech against the, the coup against Dilma, it was like, yeah, today we're going to burn down everything. Like, uh, he, he has this, this ability. Uh, uh, but then, like, he goes on TV and he's like, uh, let's see what we can do and whatnot. But uh, given that, like, I, I wouldn't take his words, uh, not, ser not, not seriously, but uh, I wouldn't, uh, like, take his words uh, literally. I think that uh, like politics is a game that you do what you can do, and uh, uh, it's not what you want to do. It's what you can do. So Lula might want to make a class collaboration government, but if a big mobilization puts him in power against the right wing, against the will of imperialism, against like the will of all the reactionary forces in Brazilian society, then he will see what he can do because like. If this, and this is why, like we we are trying to mobilize people for his candidacy as soon as possible to create like this this movement, because uh, that will put a lot of pressure. Like if you have like uh, people alert and like people that fought for for his right to run as a candidate, for, fought for his win. Um, for his victory as president, then he won't be able to say, okay, let's cut workers' rights and because the, sta the state's expenses needs to be balanced. Well, if he does that, then uh, he's doomed. So uh, th this is uh, how, how I, like, when uh, was first selected in 2002, like, before his election, there, there, there was, like, this uh, truck driver strike uh, and, and during like Fernando Henrique Cardoso's government, there were many, many strikes. Uh, the, of course, the minimum wage was almost stuck for eight years. People were in hunger. Uh, one of the main targets of the Worker Workers Party program was to defeat hunger and uh, eliminate hunger. So it, it was a very unpopular government, as all neoliberal governments, especially these radically neoliberal ones. Like they are uh, governments of uh, destroy productive forces, destroy the like the economy. Uh, so, uh, but at the moment of the uh, the election, like this movement, it, it it pulled back a bit, and they they went for these like uh, 
both and this is like for me a fault of, of the left back then of course like as Gustavo pointed out uh, Genuino apparently like like has a different position now but instead of like using uh, like uh, standing uh, like uh, with with the demonstrations and like pushing it forward they used the leverage created by the demonstrations to make a deal uh, and, and like they, they didn't strike a complete win so they made a very bad deal in the end and like the situation got colder but uh, like if we have elections uh, like hot elections uh, like boiling hot elections, then like the, the situation gets crystal clear, and it's easy for us progressive forces to to like act. And this is like how I feel. So I wouldn't take Lula words uh, very very literally. Um, I think that he will do what he can, <laughs> and it's our duty to make sure that he can do as little collaboration <laughs> as possible. <laughs> yeah. I, I just would like to say that, well, uh, regarding Lula, I want to I, I want to make two comments. One, it's about the Lula's interview, and and regarding Lula, we all uh, we all know that right now in Brazil we don't have a, a leader like Lula. You know, he's uh, uh, after his speech, we've seen how many changes in the Bolsonaro government, how they panic just because now he got his rights back political rights back right so we don't have any politician i believe right now in brazil unfortunately uh that has the same stature as, as zula and i also think uh, and i think that tiago uh, excuse me not tiago fabio i'm sorry if i if I meant that uh, this the, the left wing has been giving voice to people that do not deserve that they shouldn't give voice uh ever like reinaldo azevedo reinaldo azevedo is a guy it's an extremely dishonest person uh just just for you guys who 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 don't know him <laughs> i read a few years ago uh an article by Reinaldo Zivir in which he claimed that national socialist socialism excuse me was a left-wing movement <laughs> it was a socialist movement and that's why socialism was bad so this is the level <laughs> and he signed it was easy in his column he a vision and he signed it and so this is the level of of, of journalists that the 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 uh, of journalists that the left has been giving voice to uh another one is Alexandre de Frota it's uh, it's a representative that i i've been seeing him everywhere in every media so called progressive and i just don't understand i actually i, I used to, to 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 support one of these media and and i stopped because of that he's a guy who used to go uh uh in youtube to say that he was going to, going to beat up and kill like uh, uh people from the workers party representatives representatives that he wanted to be elected to be able to beat up representatives so this is the level of 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 of, of people that they, be, be, that, that they have been giving voice to. Uh, so to me, it, it becomes a very dangerous logic that, which is the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And I think this is really, really, really dangerous. And uh, I think that they're making a big, big mistake right now. I don't know what five of you and what you guys think, but uh, this is extremely dangerous. Uh, I, 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 I personally oppose that. <laughs> I think Lula was very wrong. Ah, and one more thing. Also, because these interviews, they become a trap. You know, if you, if right after Lula's interview to Reinaldo Azevedo, the same TV station put in the air one of their commentators who just slammed Lula and with lies and saying that, no, I have proof that Lula is corrupt. I have proof that, you know, that she was at that appointment was his and blah, blah, blah. Lies, lies, lies. So I think that also happened to Adaji when Adaji, uh, Adaji the, the, that was uh, the brand for the presidency against Bolsonaro, right? Adaji was invited also to give an interview to this extremely reactionary uh, program. And, um, and they had agreed that one of the one of the journalists who's an extremely aggressive dishonest person joe my right he's like a major big time fascist uh that he wasn't going to participate that was the condition and so when adaji when uh, in the air they actually put joe to ask him the last question 
So the next day, we had all over the news, you know, people commenting what, you know, Jogo Mainad is attacked. So they've been, you know, they've been giving voice to these people and they've been very skillful to create these traps, right? And uh, I don't know what Fabio thinks about it, you know, or Thiago or Hugo, or Hugo and I'm sorry, and Yuka, right? And now Walter. Uh, I don't know if you've been following that, but but this is my this is my position. I think it's a big mistake. We are we are not foreseeing that what they're doing. They're trying to they, they're creating traps. I don't trust uh, any of these people, let alone Hernando Zedid. Not for a second. You know they're surfing a wave. They surf waves, and and, and that's it. And, and just before uh, I like pass the the words uh yeah i totally agree uh, and it goes both ways like i uh, i don't think we should as leftists like go to this like okay hedge uh, global invited me for an interview uh, it, it, i mean okay like uh, as a very small party i'll go there i actually uh, they they are legally obliged like if you run for president to interview you so they will put you like in a very r random hour uh, like our party is very radical and then like today they will put up like a, a, a news article saying that our party is f filled with uh, north korean soldiers and people like that are <laughs> they will make like they'll try to make you look like crazy or something like that uh but but yeah like for lula and like this major leftist figures it is like usually like uh, I mentioned earlier that Adaji was invited to uh, our major like broadcaster uh, before the uh, the uh, 2018 elections just to say that he wouldn't go for uh, constituent assembly uh, like the, the like that that was the, the whole reason he went there like they, they wanted like uh, to pressure him to to have this position so. Yeah, I think it is a trap, and I think that the opposite is a trap. Like as you said, uh, like these leftist channels, they're like, "Oh, this right wing guy, now he's good. Let's invite him. Like, let's hear the other side and whatnot." And of course, like uh, people change their minds, but they have to prove in practice that they actually changed. And th these guys like did nothing remotely close to proving in practice that they they actually changed. So, uh, uh, but. Yeah, as I mentioned, like uh, before, like uh, this goes, uh, this comes from the idea of the Workers' Party that Folha de São Paulo, for instance, is their newspaper that they are on the same team, which is like completely false. And uh, like us as like Marxists, Leninists, or like, we know the the importance like of building our own press, building our like communicating directly to the people, and like our party, like we have. Uh, um, YouTube channel that runs like 24 hours slash seven. Like, of course, we can't be live all the time, but we strive to be as much as possible. We have like paper printed and digital. And the worst party, which they don't they don't have like a, a, a very like they don't have the, their own press. Uh, the, of course, they have like their media, but it, it's not like uh, they have like enough resources to have uh, uh, their own Folha de São Paulo, their own like, and we should strive for that. Like we should have our own direct com communication channel with with the people. Otherwise, we will always go through this distorted filter that Gustavo was pointing out. And yeah, now I, I give you uh, the, the, the word to you guys, otherwise I'm speaking for Yes, sir. We still have five minutes. Is there any more comments or questions? Well, I um, 
I can maybe comment on in, in a sense, maybe try to see, try to wrap up a little bit um, what we talk theoretically. It's interesting because it's clear that that there is a the, the division now in the in the in the Brazilian ruling class. So uh, I didn't even know that that Alexander Frota was was an oppositionist. Now I mean, wasn't he a minister or something? Oh, he so. uh, he like is just a Congress. Man, but okay. Okay. He, he was elected yeah, yeah. in the Bolsonarist yes, wave, like, okay. and he's yeah. like a super strong guy yeah. that had like these schools and these guns in his shirts and whatnot. He he was like super super far right in 2018. Yes, but now the, the mood is down, and he he goes with the flow. Like it's like the opportunity. Mm. Yes, yes. Can I just make a comment? Because yeah. I, I find quite important. Alexandre Frota is the grand nep- grand nephew of the Frota, the General Frota, who was a, 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 a the extreme right wing, like the hardcore of the military during, during the dictatorship. And and he says that probably he's from Rio de Janeiro and he's the uh, the grand nephew of uh, Frota. So and he's. Uh, Yes, uh, he's a, he's a, you, you don't need to hear him like a minute to know that he's a total fascist, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> he hasn't changed anything, yes. you know, hasn't changed, he's surfing away, he hasn't changed a- anything, it's just because they're, 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 how do you say, uh, they're dispute political territory, political capital, Bolsonaro and him, Bolsonaro is, a, is, a, is clearly an extremely authoritarian tier. If you don't agree with him 110%, you're out. That's how it works. Things work, right? And, and so all these people are, like, I think, uh, trying to, to, to uh, uh, gain their, uh, uh, conquer their own territory, political territory, political space. And, um, and now they're asserting the waves that they are supposedly against Bolsonaro. Well, they could be against Bolsonaro, but I don't think that they're against uh, Bolsonaro's ideology. And Alexandre Frota also said once, he was, a, 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 years ago, he was an actor. Uh, he was a prominent actor. And then, uh, I don't know what happened that he went into, uh, he became like a porn star. And, uh, and he gave an interview saying that if he wasn't a, 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 an actor, he would like to be from Bokri, which is like one of the most violent police in Rio de Janeiro, right? And that was his dream, his second dream. So it, it's a character that it's extremely dangerous, and I think that we are giving voice to these people, and it, it's a big mistake to, to to give voice to these people. Yes, <laughs> sorry. But on the other hand, it also reflects that there is a division. So that's that's one thing that it's uh, the, that it's uh, interesting in this process, and that and it also interesting that the the, the difference was mentioned with with uh, the two thousand and two situation. I think that, that Fabio mentioned that uh, at the time there was, I mean, regarding what was happening elsewhere in Latin America, Venezuela and so on, uh, um, I mean, the bourgeoisie kind of was forced to make concessions. So in the sense that, okay, we'll let Workers' Party into power. Uh, at least they they won't steer things too much as they have in Venezuela and so on, and 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 I mean and there was space in, in the terms of the of the social of the of the retribution of wealth. There was some man- space for maneuver in the sense that the the bourgeoisie the, the imperialist man uh, and the the Brazilian bourgeoisie had space to maneuver and to to make those concessions, but. Is it the same now? I mean, in the sense that the PT, the PT right from the beginning, is mer- can't negotiate with the, with the ruling class. In the sense that the ruling class does not, I think that economically can't make concessions and and with in the in the in, and still make capital accumulation run, and at the same time make concessions. I, I, don't, I don't think there's the economic maneuver, space of maneuver for that. On the one hand. And uh, and on the other hand, that's that's the the, the with the division of the, of the bourgeoisie, I think, and this it's uh, um, an availability or lack lack of of want to go into a class collaboration government. There is more space to pressure the PT from the left. So that's why I think it's it's interesting that it's if if you have a divided uh, divided ruling class. And you have, if you have a uh, mobilized working class and uh, lower classes, I mean, I think that there's a whole combination that 
so I think that in general, I think that that there's there's a whole lot of potential and but yes, uh, uh we all yes if uh, if any if someone wants still to add something, if not, I can all, I, I can also uh, Fabio can also close the, the the discussion and or but if anyone still wants to shoot a question or so, there's 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 time. Uh, I just want to say something. Yes. I don't have a question. It's just something that, uh, uh, if I'm wrong, would like Fabio to correct me. But I recently saw an interview with uh, Putin Enta, the president of PSA, and and his position is 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 what you, is is exactly what you're saying. I think Thiago is that uh, the PSA right now supports Lula's uh, uh, running for the presidency. But will uh, be the opposition if he wins, right? Will uh, be make opposition, and and I think that's what you're talking about. It's pressure. Uh, there is room for pressure on Lula and BT, and because right now we really don't have, unfortunately, as I said, any uh, political figure that has not even close to the stature of uh, of, of Lula, right? And so I think that's that's what is left now. Is is what you said? Pressure. A lot of pressure. Be the opposition and put a lot of pressure. Uh, unfortunately, yes. Uh, did, does Fabio want to, to to say some final words? Uh, yeah. Um, one thing that I would like to add is that the the situation is pretty dire in Latin America, but I hope we like. Um, uh, our like uh, the movements from our working class uh, back home they, they can inspire things here in Europe because the situation is pretty bad here as well and like for instance we we see Andrea Ventura also here um, uh, Hala Alo and uh, like uh, Marie Le Pen things are like uh, like the, the contradictions of course like they blow up in the poorest countries because uh, we are put under very very bad circumstances but they are coming here as well and with the whole vaccination uh, like flop if I may say I don't know if it's but like here in Europe it's like it is being like very very bad like when compared to other like uh, developed countries even like the the uk or the the us uh like this this is bound like it shows like that the the neoliberal governments like it's getting clear like because uh, you see like you look at the pandemic any government what they should do like nothing is more important than having the vaccines i don't care how much it costs i don't care what i have to do i have to, like, to pay i have to make, break the patents and whatnot and this is like not happening and it's not happening even like in the developed countries so uh, the the contradictions will soon blow up and i hope that uh yeah i, I really like this space and uh, i like to like the, discuss the uh, overall political situation with everyone because i think that will We're on the theater to pretty much follow what I would like to see. Yes, and uh, well, it, and for everyone should uh, follow the the Comité for the Bolsonaro in 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 Finland. So, in the in the events description, there's the name. Uh, you can search for them in um, on Facebook. So, also to be aware of what things are. What's happening also here, also here in Finland regarding this, the Brazilian situation? Mm, yeah, so there it's in the. And also, uh, of course, Tiago, if you know more Brazilian people, we have a, com a committee in uh, yes. uh, Portugal as well, currently based in okay. Porto. Uh, we don't have like people organized in other cities, but we're trying to push that. Yeah. Gustavo should should check into that then. I definitely will. I will. I yeah. did not know that. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you for letting me know. I will. Can we 
because I think it's extremely important that we all be very aware of what's happening in Brazil, because Brazil can be a, a, a big lab for the rest of the world. <laughs> so we, you know, we should be really concerned what goes on in Brazil right now, because that could become like a, a snowball. Hopefully not. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Hopefully or like a, a uh, snowball but, but I think for the left. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 yes, that's what we have to fight for. That's what we have to do. Exactly. Exactly. To uh, make people aware of that, what's happening. Well, in Brazil, uh, I, I, I often talk to, to, to family members and friends. And uh, right now, the level of, of of, of misinformation is, 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 is huge, it's great, it's aid, chaos and, and, and confusion. Mm. I think that's part of the strategy. And, uh, but anyway, yes, we have to, to, to try to take advantage of these moments and, uh, and, you know, in turn, change this game. <laughs> yes. Uh so I'd like to thank you all, and we'll we'll be uh, in touch. We'll be in Emilio, uh, we will be in touch after this situation, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll we'll see the mobilization growing in Brazil. We'll be we will see international solidarity happening, and. That's it. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. It was a very nice, very nice talk. I, I at least also learned a lot, and it was very interesting. Interesting to, very, very rewarding to talk with you. Thank you all, comrades, and the struggle we continues. Tiago, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry to cut you off, but uh, mm -hmm. just an idea: we could organize events like this and invite more people. Uh, people from uh, I know people from the previous generation who fought the dictatorship in '64, and uh, you know that would be also I th I think interesting. To, I think to so. Listen to them what they have to say, right? And uh, it, yes, and definitely now with I mean of course that uh, uh, with this corona this corona issue also also had the the the, the benefits so to speak in terms that. I mean, the bar has, has lowered quite a lot to organize this sort of talk. So, and it's, I think that that's a good thing that we can do. I mean, uh, for example, it would be, it would be nice to have, to have the, I mean, to have more and more, more talks organized by, by the, either by the committees or, or whoever, or PCO or whatever, but to have this, 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 uh, this in the future as well. Hmm. Yes. 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 So thanks a lot and see you there Thank in you. the struggles. Yeah, see you all the streets. Thank you. Bye. Yes. Bye.